Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. I'm Sally and this is Secret Life of a Seamstress. I hope you're all really well and you've had a good week. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you everything that I've been making this month in May. And we've come to the end of another month again. I can't quite believe it. This month has been quite a busy month. I've had quite a few things to make, so I'm looking forward to sharing them with you today. If you are new to my channel, I post lots of sewing content. So if you're into sewing as well, I'd love you to consider subscribing and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you are a regular viewer, thank you so much for joining me again today. But just before I get started sharing what I've been making, I'll just tell you what I'm wearing today. And uh, what I'm wearing today is a Megan Nielsen Sodley blouse. And I made this recently. It's made from a really lovely art gallery rayon fabric. Um, and I've made it as a kind of peplum style top with a little floaty bottom like this. And today I've just got it on kind of backwards. So you can wear this top um, either with the tie at the front, it kind of ties up in a nice bow at the front with a little keyhole opening. And you'd normally wear the tie at the front, I think, but you can actually wear it either way. So today I'm wearing it just with the collar to the front um, because I thought that the tie would possibly get in the way while I was talking in this video today. So I decided to wear it this way around. So yeah, this is the Megan Nielsen Sudley dress and top pattern. And I absolutely love this pattern. I've made it many times and I think it looks really pretty as a top. Um, we've had a little bit of sunshine today. I think the weather is gonna warm up slightly for the weekend, fingers crossed. So maybe I'll finally get to wear some of my made tops and dresses after all, because I feel like I've just been living in my kind of autumn and winter sweatshirts and jumpers and things like that. And I'm dying to get all of my nice floaty dresses and tops out. So fingers crossed for some nice weather soon. So on to what I've been making in May. So I made four things this month, um, which wasn't bad actually. I had a couple of Minerva makes I was quite behind with, so I really needed to get on with those this month. So the first thing I made this month, and you may have seen this already if you watch my videos regularly, this was um, a make that I made in collaboration with Makerist. I tested a new app for them. They have a new app out called the Makerist AR app. And um, it's a really kind of fancy new app. I've done a whole other video on it. Um, and it's an app that you can use on your phone to draw out patterns without using a PDF or a paper pattern. So I will link that video down below so that you can pop over and have a look at it if you haven't already. Um, but basically I made this top um, testing their AR app. So I used my phone to scan the pattern piece onto the fabric. Um, without using a paper pattern. And I chose a pattern from their website, one of their patterns that was AR compatible. And I chose this um, So Explicit Patterns kimono tee. And I actually think this is a really lovely pattern. You don't have to download it as an AR file. You can buy it as a normal PDF pattern um, and just print it out as normal. But this time I used the AR app, obviously, because I was testing it for Makerist. <laughs> um, but yeah, you don't have to do that. And I think this pattern is really, really lovely. So it's a really basic pattern. So it's just a back and a front and they're both cut on the fold. And then the armholes here and the neckline and actually the hem, if you want to, are all bias bound. So I found this such a quick pattern to sew up once I got going. And um, I didn't actually bias buy my hem in the end. I just literally turned it up by overlocking it and then turning up a hem. And it's got a really kind of cute high-low hem. So the hem just uh, sits, it's like a curved hem and it sits a little bit lower on your hips than the front does. And I find it a really lovely flattering top. So I've sewn mine up in a lovely viscose fabric, which I got from John Lewis in the sale. And I think I was really lucky to pick this up. I think it was about three pounds a meter or something. It was really cheap. And I really wish I got more of this because it's so pretty and lovely to sew with. And it's actually really nice to wear. It's really soft. And I can't find um, the fabric designer of this fabric. So I haven't been able to link it anywhere so far for anyone else to go and find. Um, I've had lots of questions about it when I put this top on Instagram, but yeah, sadly I can't find um, the maker or the designer of this fabric. So if you do have any of this fabric or if you've seen it around, please do let me know where I can um, buy more from and let other people know where they can buy it. Because as I say, it was quite a um, popular one when I put it on Instagram. But yeah, as for this pattern, I really, really love it. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're a beginner or you just want a really kind of simple summer top pattern, really quick and easy to sew. So the sleeves are kind of grown on. If you can see that there, they're just kind of um, grown on to the front and back piece. And if you make it in a drapey fabric like I have here, they just kind of hang over really nicely. 
So uh, yeah, I'll definitely be making more of this pattern and I've already got another one cut out to sew actually, I just haven't got around to sewing it yet, which is really silly because it's so quick to sew up. I'm actually thinking for next time that I might actually crop the, um, if I can hold it up like this, um, I might actually crop the, or straighten off at least, the hem so that I don't have this curve because this is actually quite long on me and um, nine times out of 10, I'll tend to wear tops tucked into jeans and things anyway. So um, I think next time I'm just gonna chop off the curved hem and crop it a little bit and see how that turns out. I think that would be really nice too. So that was my first make, the So Explicit Patterns Kimono Tea. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. So I'll link everything that I talk about in the description of the video, as I always do, uh, just so that you can pop over and see the items in more detail if you want to. So the next make I managed to get finished this month was my pair of Carolyn pyjamas. And I did show the top of these in one of my recent videos and I've managed to get the whole set finished now. So I'll just show you them in a minute. But first I'll just show you the pattern. So this is the Carolyn pyjama patterns. It's by Closet Core patterns and I think it is such a lovely um, pattern. <laughs> so it comes as either a short sleeve version with a pair of shorts or a long sleeve version with a pair of trousers. Both times I've made this now I've made the short version just because um, that's more suitable for me. I think I'd be far too hot at night to wear um, a long pair of pyjamas like that although I do really like the style of these so I might make these ones one day we'll see but yeah it's a really lovely pattern so here's my pair of very loud Carolyn pyjamas and I showed this fabric before and I think I showed you the whole shirt before I can't remember if it was actually completely finished or not um, but yeah this fabric is an art gallery cotton fabric I got it from Minerva it was given to me in exchange for a blog post um, it's an art gallery 100% cotton fabric. It has a really cute sunglasses print all over it. And this colorway is actually called Melon and it comes in kind of pale green, minty kind of green color as well. So um, I'll link this fabric down below, of course, so that you can go and check it out if you want to. Um, but yeah, I just thought that this fabric would make a perfect pair of pajamas and I really love how they've turned out. My first pair of Carolyn pajamas I made in a viscose fabric um, and it was quite tricky to work with in terms of putting this pajama top together. Working with a cotton this time it was much easier and um, I just felt like everything kind of sat better using a cotton for this version. Um, so you can see that I've used a navy contrast piping around the collar and around the front kind of button band and then just along the pocket there and I absolutely love how the piping looks. It's really tempting I think to cut out the piping because it does take that extra bit of time and care but I think if you can it just kind of makes the whole garment look just that little bit nicer I think. So I really love this navy piping. I actually got this from eBay. I will try and link it below if I can. Um, but I did get it quite a while ago. But I think Minerva and other places do stock similar piping, so I'll link it down below. In my previous version, I used a bias tape folded in half for piping and um, this time using the proper piping. It actually went in so much better and so much easier. This time I opted not to interface my button band or my facing down the front or my collar. And um, I know that's a little bit controversial <laughs> and I did think to myself maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should be interfacing this but um, I just thought for nightwear I'm not really a big fan of interfacing anyway. It makes everything feel so stiff. This time I just tried out not using any interfacing in the collar or the front facing and I'm just going to see how that goes. I guess in the long run it might mean that it's not as um, long lasting in terms of washing and wearing and things. At this time I just um, opted to leave that bit out and I actually quite like how nice and soft that feels. So that's the top of my Carolyn pyjamas, a really lovely pattern. I really enjoy putting this top together. It does take quite a long time, or it did for me anyway. Um, this took me about, I don't know, three or four hours. It's quite um, involved, especially when you're adding the piping, but I think it's a really nice kind of mindful so, and it's a really nice pattern to follow. The instructions are great. If you are a bit nervous about trying out these pajamas as I was when I first had a go, don't be because um, as I say, the pattern is really lovely and really easy to follow. So these are the shorts, a nice comfy elasticated waist pair of shorts. Um, these come together really nicely as well. I'll just show you actually. I um, I got three meters of this fabric and art gallery cotton does come up quite narrow. So I think it was only 110 centimeters wide, but I got three meters. 
And I thought that would be enough based on the pattern, but I think because this fabric was a directional print, um, I struggled to get all of my pieces cut out in the right direction. So if you notice just here, you can't really see, but I had to cut the pocket facings uh, with the glasses facing upwards rather than going across, which they should have been. Um, but that was okay. I mean, it was a bit annoying and I did wonder if it would look a bit weird, but actually I quite like it now. And you can actually hardly see the difference, can you? And for bed, it doesn't really matter anyway, does it? But yeah, just be aware that this pattern, it does take quite a lot of fabric actually, especially if you're using a narrow fabric like I was for this. Um, just make sure that you kind of have enough. There's lots of parts to this pattern. I don't sew with cotton very much actually, but um, when I do sew with it, I'm always reminded how lovely it is to work with. It's just so much easier, isn't it, than a floppy um, viscose. Um, I did wonder if you could actually make these shorts as uh, shorts to wear out. I'd definitely lengthen them a little bit if I was gonna wear them out of the house, but they are quite nice really, aren't they? Just to wear as like a casual pair of summer shorts, nice elasticated waist, um, nice and easy to wear. So I might investigate that at some point in the future. But I do absolutely love the Carolyn pyjamas pattern. I'm so glad I had a go at it. It's actually one of my make nine makes, so I cross that off now as well. Uh, it's one of those patterns that it looked a little bit difficult and I was a little bit kind of nervous about having a go at it, but I'm really trying to push myself a little bit more in terms of more involved and more difficult patterns because I'm definitely someone who likes to make what I know. Um, I don't mind hacking patterns around that I'm familiar with and things like that, but sometimes I'm a little bit nervous about trying new techniques and things like that. So it's really good sometimes I think to just push yourself that little bit further and try out new things. And I'm really glad that I gave that one a go. So next I have another Darling Rangers dress to show you. And this was another Minerva make. So this fabric again was given to me in exchange for a review on the Minerva website. Um, so this dress and my glasses pajamas should actually be up on the Minerva website by the time this video goes live. And I'll just link my Minerva profile below the video so that you can pop over and read my reviews if you'd like to. So this again is another art gallery cotton. I seem to be obsessed with art gallery at the moment. Even the top I'm wearing is um, art gallery fabric. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking their prints at the moment. I'm clashing a little bit here on in all the florals. Um, but yeah, this is an art gallery cotton again. And I just really liked this lovely ditzy floral print and all the different colors that there are in this fabric. So that's what attracted me to this one. Um, and I thought I would just keep it simple with this make and I made another Darling Rangers dress. So you probably all know by now how much I love the Darling Rangers dress pattern by Megan Nielsen. So this is the pattern cover. I'm sorry about how battered my version of it is. I've shown this many times, I know, but I'll just quickly show you again. So this is the front of the pattern. So you can see that it's mainly a dress version. It's kind of button down shirt dress and you can make different variations of it. So you can make a three quarter length elasticated sleeve like this one. Or um, on the back here, you can see that there are other different versions of the dress that you can make and you can also make a lovely blouse. Um, and I've made lots of different versions of the dress and I've also made a couple of blouse versions as well. And I really do love this pattern. So yeah, for this Minerva make, I thought I would just keep it really simple and I would make another short sleeve Darling Ranges dress. And that was just because I know how much wear I get out of these dresses in the summer. And I thought the fabric would really suit a nice shirt dress. Um, and yeah, that's what I decided to make. So I just went for the short sleeve version of the dress. Um, you can see that it's buttoned down into a nice kind of gathered skirt at the bottom and it buttons all the way through down to the hem. <laughs> Very difficult to show you on the camera like this, sorry, but I will, of course, add in some pictures as well so that you can see the whole dress. But yeah, I absolutely love this pattern. I find it really, just like a really nice pattern to follow. It's a really nice kind of construction. I'll just take the hanger out so you can see how it's finished inside. So the neckline is kind of bias bound um, and the bias binding kind of goes into the button band facing like this. So when the dress is open, it's really nicely finished inside. And I love how that all kind of comes together. It's a really quick sew for something that looks quite involved. I think um, it actually comes together really quickly. And I think I made this in about three hours or so, um, maybe because I made it so many times before, <laughs> but I do think um, the way that it's made, it just comes together really nicely and really quickly. And um, I'll just show you the back if I can. 
So the back is kind of tied um, at the waist and it just brings the whole thing in. So it gives a really nice kind of fitted look. Something I really like about this pattern is that it just looks so different depending on which fabric you use. So I've made a couple of cotton versions, I've made a chambray version, and I've also made a couple of viscose versions with the longer sleeves. And they all look, to me anyway, completely different. And I really, really like that in a pattern because I think it, you know, there's always something kind of new that you can do with it. So that is my most recent Darling Rangers dress and I can't wait to wear this. So my final make of the month was a Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company. So if you haven't seen the Davenport dress, it is quite new. I'll just pop in an image of the pattern so that you can see what it looks like. So I made this dress from a really lovely art gallery again. <laughs> Rayon fabric, which I picked up from Minerva in one of their recent flash sales, and they had 25% off of art gallery fabric. So I um, managed to pick this up for 25% off, which was really nice because art gallery fabrics can be more on the pricey side, even though I do think they're actually worth it for the quality. Uh, but anyway, I picked up this fabric and I thought it would be really well suited to the Davenport dress. And I did actually record a sew along video of me making this dress. So if you are interested to watch that, then I'll link that down below as well. Uh, but yeah, this was a really, really lovely make. I was a little bit nervous about some of the techniques in here because the, um, the bodice inside is actually all finished really nicely. So it's finished with some lined shoulder yokes and then the back of the dress. You probably won't be able to see it in this busy fabric, but there's a yoke here. Um, and then the bottom of the dress is kind of gathered in and the yoke is lined um, using the burrito method, which I'd not done before. The Friday Pattern Company actually have a YouTube channel and they have a whole video on there um, of a lady actually making up this dress as a full kind of tutorial. Um, so I used that while I was making the dress and it was so helpful. And um, yeah, their instructions were really clear and the dress came together really beautifully. And um, I'll just show you some of the details of the dress. I don't want to talk about it too much because if you have watched my sew along, then I'll probably just be repeating myself. Um, but the neckline here is elasticated. So that's how you get the dress on and off. And um, it has two little shoulder yokes here and these are lined inside. So it gives a really nice finish. And then the dress has a drawstring casing at the waist, which is pulled in with a drawstring. There are pockets here too, and um, yeah, the skirt is just finished with a really pretty frill. So yeah, I absolutely love this pattern. I really want to make another one. I'd really like to make a sleeveless version or a short sleeve version for summer because I know that this is quite a dark fabric and it does have long sleeves, but uh, with the weather at the moment, I think it'd actually be perfect. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'd really like to take the sleeves out maybe and just have this little flutter sleeve and make it in like a viscose linen or something like that. I think that would really be really pretty for summer. And of course you could play around with the skirt a little bit and have it maxi or longer midi length or something like that. And I think that would be really nice too. So that's everything that I made this month. I'm just gonna really quickly show you a sneak peek of something that I'm working on at the moment. So I've been sewing up the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra dress and I'm sure you've probably all seen that pattern. So I'll just put in an image of the pattern in case you haven't seen it. But it's the newest pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. It's a really lovely shirt dress with a beautiful um, either just a straight skirt or a gathered skirt I should say or a tiered kind of midi length skirt. So this is where I am with this make at the moment. I did show this fabric recently in a fabric haul video. So you can see that I've made the bodice of the dress um, with the collar and the buttons and everything and I'm making the short sleeve version. So I won't share too much about this, I just wanted to quickly show you where I am with it but I'm actually going to be recording a whole separate video on this pattern and reviewing the pattern properly um, with Becky from Notes from the Sewing Room so watch out for that video, hopefully it'll be coming up quite soon. But um, yeah, hopefully by then I'll have a whole finished dress to show you and I'll be able to do a proper review of that pattern and just tell you how I found it and see how Becky got on making her version. And it'll be really lovely to make another video with Becky because we have made videos together in the past and it's always been really good fun. So that's everything I have to share with you this month, everything I've been making in May. I hope you like what I've made. I think my favourite is definitely the Davenport dress because I really enjoyed making that. It was fun to record the sew along as well because I haven't recorded a sew along in quite a while. So if you have already watched that, thank you so much for watching it. And if you haven't, then I'll leave the link below if you'd like to pop over and view that. So don't forget to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you've been up to and let me know what you've been sewing. It's really good for inspiration and finding new other patterns 
lessons and things like that for my own sewing. Um, so yeah, don't forget to leave me a comment below and let me know what you're up to. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'd really love it if you've enjoyed the video if you could give it a like because that really helps me and my channel. Take care everyone and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!